I first offer my respectful obeisance to Radharani, the supreme goddess and the bliss-giving power of God. She is the purest of the gopis and embodies the bliss of Vrindavan. I now bow to the supreme lord Shri Krishna. O oh Lord! As a baby bird yearns for its mother, as a famished infant longs to suckle the mother's breast, and as a lover craves for the beloved, may my mind always long for your divine vision. Tasya Sanjana Yan Harsham Kuru Vridha Pita Mahaha Singhanadam Binadyao Chaihi Shankam Dagmo Pratapavan Tatha Shankas Chabayascha Panavana Kago Mukaha Sahaseva Bihanyanta Sashabdas Tumulo Bhavatu Tatha Shweter Hayer Yukte Mahatisyanda Nesitao Madhava Pandava Shaiva Divyo Shanko Pradatmatu Pancha Janyam Rishi Kesho Devadatam Thananjaya Pondram Dadmo Mahashankam Bhima Karma Vrukodaraha Ananta Vijayam Raja Kunti Putro Yudhishthiraha Nakula Sahadevascha Subhosha Mani Pushpakau Kashyas Chapara Meshwasaha Shikhandi Cha Maharakaha Drishta Dyugno Viratascha Satyakis Chaparajitaha Drupado Draupadeyascha Sarva Shapriti Vipate Saubhadrasya Mahabahuhu Shankhandatmu Pratak Pratak Sagosho Dartha Rashtranam Hridayani Vyadarayate Nabhascha Priti Vim Chaiva Tumulobhyanu Nadayan Then, the grand old man of the Karu dynasty, the glorious patriarch Bhishma, roared like a lion, and blew his conch shell very loudly, giving joy to Duyodhan. Thereafter, conches, kettle drums, bugles, trumpets, and horns suddenly bled forth, and their combined sound was overwhelming. Then, from amidst the Pandav army, seated in a glorious chariot drawn by white horses, Madhav and Arjun blew their divine conch shells. Rishikish blew his conch shell, called Panchajunya, and Arjun blew the Devadatta. Bhim, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his mighty conch, called Pondra. King Yudhishthir blew the Anant Avijay, while Nakul and Sahadev blew the Sugosh and Manapushpak. The excellent archer and king of Kashi, the great warrior Shikandi, Drishtadyumna, Wirat, and the invincible Satyaki, Drupad, the five sons of Draupudi, and the mighty armed Abhimanyu, son of Subhadra, all blew their respective conch shells, O ruler of the earth. The terrific sound thundered across the sky and the earth, and shattered the hearts of your sons, O Dhritarastra. Bhishma was aware that Duryodhan had no chance of victory, as the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna was on the opposite side. However, he understood his grandnephew's anxiety, and to cheer him up he blew his conch shell loudly. In olden days, blowing of the conch shell in the battlefield signaled the start of the war.
This also conveyed to Duryodhan that Bhishma was ready to lead the Kaurav army, and he would fight dutifully and spare no pain. On hearing Bhishma's call for battle, everyone in the Kaurav army also started playing various instruments eagerly, creating tumultuous sound. All these instruments playing together created a loud pandemonium. The uproar of the Kaurav army had started to wane. Then from the Pandav side, seated on a magnificent chariot, the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna and Arjun, both blew their conch shells intrepidly, which ignited the enthusiasm of the Pandav army as well. Here, Sanjay has addressed Lord Sri Krishna as Madhav. It is a combination of two words, Ma which refers to Goddess Lakshmi, the Goddess of Prosperity, and Dav is used for husband. Goddess Lakshmi is Lord Vishnu's wife. Sri Krishna is the avatar of Lord Vishnu. This verse implies that the Goddess of Prosperity was with the Pandavas, and by her grace, they would be triumphant in this war, and reclaim their kingdom soon. The sons of King Pandu are called Pandavas, and it may be used for any of the five brothers, the Pandav being referred to as Arjun, the third among the five. He was a mighty warrior and a superior archer. His magnificent chariot was a gift from Agni, the celestial god of fire. Sri Krishna is also addressed as Rishikish which means the lord of the mind and senses. Sri Krishna is the sovereign master of everybody's minds and senses. Throughout his wonderful pastimes, he displayed complete control over his mind and senses. Yudhisthya, the eldest Pandav is being addressed here as king. He has always displayed royal grace and nobility, whether living in a palace or in a forest. He also got this title by performing the Rahasuya Yagna, a royal sacrifice, which earned him tributes from all the other kings of the land. Sanjay also called Dhritarashtra the ruler of the earth. The real reason for this appellation was to remind him of his duties as the ruler of the country. With so many kings and princes participating from both sides in this war, it was as if the entire earth was split into two parties. It was definite that this mammoth war would cause irreversible destruction. The only person who could stop the war at this juncture was Dhritarashtra, and Sanjay wanted to know if he was willing to do that. Sanjay conveyed to Dhritarashtra that the tremendous sound of the various conch shells from the Pandav army was shattering the hearts of his sons. Whereas, he did not mention any such reaction from the Pandavas when the Kauravs were creating a similar commotion. The Kauravs were fearful as their conscience pricked them for their crimes and misdeeds. They were relying solely on their physical strength to fight the war. However, the Pandavas were confident and felt protected, as the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna was by their side, their victory was definite. Keeping your commitment is critical. We should complete our duty in spite of knowing the consequence, if we have given our word. Therefore, think about the consequence before giving your word. We have an intuition which tells us quite often about the consequence of any event. It is important to acknowledge this intuition. In the next episode we will go through the verses 20 to 26. In these verses, the Srimad Bhagavad Gita talks about Arjun's desire to see the warriors who have assembled to participate in this great war. It is a preamble to his great desolation. It will teach us about the moment when we start to take notice of what we can see, but yet we do not observe till it is too late.